Okay, so we talked about Sada um, a little bit already, but let me know, like, how did y'all get tapped in? Because, like, y'all bond, it really gives, like, big brother, little brother. Like, I really like what y'all got going on. How did y'all I grew get up with his little brother, Quill. Mm -hmm. And then my big brother, Weez, like, that's, like, my big brother. That's one of Sada friends growing up. So he knew I was doing music, and he just brought me to Sada one day. And, it, like, I really didn't want to just be, like, I'm around this nigga. I'm a just do music with this nigga. I had to see w what type of person he was. Mm -hmm. So we just started hanging, and then we got closer and grew closer. I started going to shows with him. He was taking me out of town and shit to um, his shows and shit he had to do. And then we just grew close. Like, that's bro for show. Yeah, people call you his protege of sorts. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? I mean, some a part of me be like, yeah, I ain't no nigga protege, but I – Technically, yeah, like shit. He showed me how to do this shit for real. Like, I go around, he took me around the world. Like, you feel me? Like, showed me how to really do this shit. I learned how to perform from that nigga. Like, all that shit. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of my versatility, like, I get that from that nigga. Like, that nigga, for sure, one, one of the greatest entertainers I ever seen for real. Like, part of that, I've been a brown, like, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, are you signed to him? Mm -mm, I'm signed to Geffen. You're signed to Geffen. Okay, we're going to get into that. So what's the, so there's no type of, like, situation between you and Sada outside of him kind of being, like, a big brother mentor. That's my big brother. Okay, cool. Um, So you said that you're signed to Geffen. It's Geffen. It's like Interscope Geffen. Okay. That's T. That's one thing that I actually didn't know. So how did you get into that that deal? Um, I just, like, my music just had, a like, a spurt where it just started going crazy like around the summer of last year and then like everybody just started tapping in with me like mm -hmm. I just had a crazy ass crazy ass run like from like July to like now for real for real but around my birthday mm -hmm. I got signed like in October but I had like all the labels was calling me and shit. See, that I knew. I knew that you had interest. I didn't know that you had actually landed on one. So what was it about them that made you want to go with them as opposed to the other people that put offers on the table? I knew people around, like, I knew people in the building, like, in the Geffen building, so I just knew, like, I had more push in the building with a label if I knew somebody in the building was more family-oriented. Mm -hmm. um, and then they just had the best offer. When I was talking to my lawyer, like, they had the best offer. Like, mm -hmm. the deal was the best one. Okay, so now a lot of this is making sense because – Icky Vicky was a re-release, mm -hmm. right? Was that because of... Label. Label? Okay. Sure. But on the topic of Icky Vicky, one million, two weeks. Shout out to you for that. That's hard. Visuals is fire. How did you come up with those? I really wanted to be Chip Skylark. Because it was Shiny like Icky Vicky, you feel uh -huh. me? But then they like, you should go, you should be Timmy Turner. So they came up with the treatment and then I liked the video. So I'm like... Because I really wanted to be chased around by girls, for mm -hmm. real, for real. <laughs> it was yeah. the skill in me. Just wanted to be chased around by girls, for real, and be Chip, um, Chip Skylark. I mean, the there's video, still potential. Yeah. Next song. No. No? You wouldn't do that in another song? Uh -uh. You wouldn't do Okay. I'm done with Timmy Turner. See, all right, can I just tell you, maybe it's the New York in me, because we got a lot of sample music going around. Like, I was really thinking, like, a, hey, Vicky, you're so, so, like, a, a <laughs> sample of that would have been fire. So, the fact you said no more it's fairly odd appearance. so hard like, to clear Tim fairly odd appearance sample. Yo, they don't want to clear none of my just, samples. Just in case. They don't want to clear none of my samples. So, how do you feel about, like, music that is, like, released that's not cleared? Because a lot of people are doing that now. Like, they not. Yeah, they not under labels, though. Once that's you true. under label, you got to clear everything. That's true. Business side, really, like, the side you really need to pay attention to. The music side be easy. Like, if you're doing music, you got to know the business. Because mm -hmm. uh, that shit will fuck you up. And it costs, like, people ain't clearing shit for free. Right. Like, sometimes, but not and for real. Niggas want their money. Mm -hmm. So, are you learning the business as you're going through it? Or is there somebody that's, like, putting you on? I know you got Sada. But are there people that you turn to for, like, business advice for in the sure. industry? Got my cousin shoot, my manager Juan, Pootie, um, my lawyer. Like I talk to everybody. My label, the president of my label, caught me every day. Like mm -hmm. 
So it just be like my A and R talk to me. So I really got a good supporting cast. I talk to other people, other artists, learn from them. So mm-hmm. like T Grizzly, I just like started being around him, but he helped me a lot. He showed me the business. So I just try to take I try to have my ears open at learning. Mm-hmm through everybody for real. And I'm glad you brought up T because I was wondering also how y'all became connected. Um, He just tapped in one day. Like, Mm -hmm. I know, like, we are from Detroit. So, of course, I know somebody he knows. So, Mm. we just, like, we just did some music one time. When I was, I really seen him when I was in Atlanta one time. And then after that, we did some music in L.A. And then we just, like, I ain't gonna lie, T, when I work with T, the energy be good. Like, I be going on vibes and energy. Mm-hmm. Like, the energy was there. We made some good music. So, we like, we gonna come out with a little tape or something. Okay, yeah. I saw the tent in the bio. And then he um did, like, the car freestyle. And then he nominated you to do yours. And then you did yours. You said that back real fast, too. It was, mm-hmm. like, under an hour. For sure. I think, yeah. You did that. And it was good. So, but even with the good, not saying that this is bad, but, like, you did that very quick. Fire in the booth. You bodied, but you said that you was nervous. I was nervous. Why was you so nervous? Because this is a camera. Like, I seen Drake on that. I seen Drake on fire in the booth. Like, if like that shit different. Like, when you be like, damn, I was just watching this shit a few years back. Drake was on here. Now nah, I'm on here. You be like, damn, all these cameras looking at me. Like, mm-hmm. cameras make me nervous. Oh, See, I ain't looked of... in this camera not one time. That's, you, you we here, because I don't really be looking either. <laughs> So you was nervous, but I think that I think that you did well with that. Um, but I thought it was just interesting to see, like, when you were like handling it on your own in front of your own camera, like you sent it back real fast, and then like on that platform, you was like, "Oh, I'm so nervous." So how do you get over like your nerves, and how do you build your confidence in situations like that? Just do it. I, I try not to think about it. Okay. I try to close my eyes, then when I open it, it's like I'm doing it now. So when I open my eyes, I got to keep doing it or mm-hmm. I'm going to be embarrassed. I'd rather be shot and embarrassed, though. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to embarrass myself on camera. So if I'm already on camera doing something, I got to keep doing it. So is that like a one-take situation? It was like, it is what it is? No. Oh, like okay. I, Sometimes I, it be one take, but a lot of times I ain't going to lie. Like, that shit's mm-hmm. not easy. Okay. I so, be nervous. Okay. Well, that's normal. Um, so how do you feel about when people compare you to other artists? Because that's something that's been happening a lot lately, especially on Twitter. And I feel like you handle it very well because you respond with the opposite artist's answer. I mean the opposite artist name. Because like You're not trying to I don't really scene. care. Like opinion opinion don't pay me. So it'd be like if I could big somebody else up, I'd big somebody else up. I don't got to have, like, I ain't got to be walking around like I'm the best. I don't mm-hmm. even care as long as I get paid, for real, for real. You don't care as long as you get paid. All this shit of competition, though. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, Because I feel like that feeds into you saying that you will work with your ops if it made sense. For sure. Um, how would you feel, though, if you were working with somebody who had beef with somebody that you was cool with, and then they went on the song and dissed the person that you was cool with. I'm not doing that How song. do you handle that situation? I'm not going to get on the song. I tell you, don't say that. That's disrespectful. It's disrespect when you disrespect somebody you know I'm cool with. Like, I tell everybody, like, mm-hmm. like some of my homeboys cool, not cool. Like, don't get along with some of the other people that I'm cool with. So it be like, bro, y'all could disrespect each other, but don't do that shit around me, like, Say you and her had a problem. If I'm with her and you see us out, don't do nothing to her. Don't even try that. That's disrespecting me. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I'm glad you kind of cleared that up because that's also that also kind of feeds into the narrative that people have when it comes to you working with Sada and T. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't got to get into the politics of all of that, but I know that some people are like curious as to like what that situation looks like when you are close to two people who aren't really seeing eye to eye in a moment. I mean, Sada and T knew each other before me. That's that's not my business. Mm-hmm. For real, for real. I'm, I'm here for the business. Right. Like, Sada, my real big brother. I love that nigga. Mm-hmm. Me and T getting cool, but, like, it ain't nothing like that, like, to where, like, ain't nobody died, them niggas ain't fought, none of that shit. So I really, like, I'm here for the business. Like, right. I don't be going into business thinking personally. 
if I could work with my ops, I don't even be caring about nobody. Like, ain't nobody died. I don't give – I really don't care for real. But do you even have – like, you seem so unproblematic. Like, I feel like if you have ops, they would be ops by association. They opping. For sure. They opping? <laughs> oh. Them boys, them boys opping for sure, but it's like I don't broadcast – but I got going Yeah, at all. Like, that's why I'm like, you seem very unproblematic. But that's good. I, yeah, I'm unproblematic for sure. Yeah. But like, you know, when you're unproblematic, sometimes problems come your way because people think, like, you won't, but you really will. Like, mm -hmm. And I think that that goes back to what I was saying about, like, in your music, it's, like, more of, like, at this point, if you know, you know, not you got to, like... You don't got a point to prove. Guys, it's Taylor. Make sure you follow us for more exclusives at www.talkofthetownshow.com. Like, comment, and subscribe.